What was the biggest missed opportunity this session? Hmm. Um, I mean, I could have broken more veto records. <laughs> There's a reason Republicans and Democrats call Katie Hobbs the veto queen. The first-term governor racked up 143 vetoes, smashing Janet Napolitano's record of 58 set 18 years ago. Both Democratic governors presided over divided government, dealing with Republican-controlled legislatures. I sat down with Hobbs last week at a downtown Phoenix restaurant for a look back at the longest legislative session ever and a look ahead at her plans for some of the most pressing issues facing the state. Here's the first of two segments. It's been a rough year, a year like none we've seen before. Do you like this job? I love this job. Being governor uh, is the best job in America. Given everything you've gone through uh, in the election leading up to it and, you know, the longest legislative session mm -hmm. ever, the most vetoes by a governor ever, we knew divided government was going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Is it harder than you expected? Um, it's not like I jumped into this without knowing what I was getting into. And um, the, the level of divisiveness has continued to escalate. Um, and Despite the close numbers in the legislature, there's a lot more division than there has been, certainly than when I was there. Um, and I think we have some really great examples of getting things done when we can put the partisan politics aside. We did that with the budget. We did that with Prop 400. And I think those are, are wins that we can build on. And I'm optimistic going into the next session. So talk about that. Prop 400 took a long time to, to get to yes. Um, the uh, rental tax took a long time to get to yes, mm -hmm. including your veto. What is this, the specific lesson in that you think will carry over to next year? Well, I think, again, when we can focus on a specific issue, put all the other garbage aside, we can get stuff done. Um, this was a compromise. A lot of people worked really hard to get to this compromise. Um, and Arizonans are going to win because of this compromise. Um, and that's the kind of thing we need to continue to work on. Less than a half dozen of your yeah. agency heads have been confirmed. Mm -hmm. uh, important agencies like public health, Department mm -hmm. of Health Services, not confirmed. A place like Registrar of Contractors, which mm -hmm. protects us as consumers, yes. not confirmed. Uh, what do you make of that? And could there be a breakthrough there? Um, well, I can assure Arizonans that government is running and that the, the nominees that we have in place are doing the job that they were appointed to do, um, and they will continue to, and our administration is going to support them. Um, and as we work through this unprecedented process that the Senate has, has set up, um, you know, they continue to put up hurdles, they continue to move the goalposts, and we're going to make sure that the agencies can function. Republican Senator Jay Kaufman's the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. He's the one standing in the way. You ever sat down and talked to Jake Hoffman and said, hey, what's going on? Uh, I have not directly, no. Should you? Uh, well, I talked to the president because um, he's really the one in charge. Uh, so we'll see if that changes things. And I want to go back to what you said about you know, an agency like the Department of Health Services. It's an interim director. This is an agency that protects us, as we mm -hmm. saw during the pandemic. How safe are we? from another pandemic with an interim director at the head who may not have the experience of, of an experienced public health professional? How protected you, are we? You know, when Director Chris left um, in 2021, I think, or early 22, um, Governor Ducey appointed uh, an interim and there was never any question. The Senate never said, send the nomination to us. And the agency functioned just fine. Um, so, so you think this agency is in good hands with the director who doesn't have that much public health experience, interim director? Um, yes. Right now, I'm confident in the agency's leadership. What was the biggest missed opportunity this session? Hmm. Um, I mean, I could have broken more veto records. <laughs> in terms of legislation. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I didn't come here to veto bills. I think um, there's a lot of pressing issues that Arizonans um, want dealt with. Water, 
uh, teacher shortages, investing in public education. Um, and uh, I think ES, when we talk about public education, ESAs are a big um, piece of that. Um, we're continuing to see more and more solid numbers about the actual cost of this program. It's unaccountable, it's runaway spending, and we need to uh, curtail that. Um, and I think that that's certainly going to be a focus as we move forward. I want to get to ESAs in a minute. I just want to stay with, with the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, Look at this, look at how the state budget surplus was spent. Mm -hmm. All $2.5 billion, virtually all of it went to pork. Is that something you and lawmakers are going to regret in coming years, just blowing that surplus? A lot of that surplus went to infrastructure, local infrastructure projects. That's going to be good for local economies. We made historic investments in uh, the housing trust fund, which is going to go a long way to address our affordable housing crisis, um, and uh, and I'm 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 proud of the those big wins that we got for Arizona. So budget. you're okay with spending that entire budget surplus, even though projections were that in the coming year there would be a very slim surplus in addition to a rainy day fund. When when th there was not any new spending, ongoing spending on the table, um, that was what we had to work with. So this is the only thing you could have done, basically. I, uh, new ongoing spending was a non-starter in the budget. Phoenix spent the month of July in hell. Yes. Hottest city in the country in the hottest year for this country and, and, the, Ever. and, and the whole world. Mm -hmm. um, two decades into the worst mega drought in mm -hmm. a millennium. Are we living through a climate emergency right now? Uh, well, we certainly are in a place um, that is predictable. The temperature, it's been predicted that temperatures will continue to rise. We're experiencing that right now. And, um, and we need to do both um, short-term things to address um, people being able to live through the heat, but then also um, more um, long-term on climate change in general. And what we do in Arizona, um, we'll have a collective. It's not going to directly... Um, impact climate change here, but because it's a, a global phenomenon, but we need to do more. So more like what? Um, uh, uh, re renewable energy. We're, we're focused on how we expand the, um, the, the clean energy economy here in Arizona um, and, uh, and address, you know, climate change that we know is, is, an, is a global issue. So how about, how about in the short term? Mm -hmm. The city of Phoenix has a heat officer. Yeah. I don't know that's something you consider for the state. Mm -hmm. uh, in the short term, we have Maricopa County bringing in refrigerated coolers because mm -hmm. deaths are climbing in the yes. city. How about in the short term, what can you do to help the most vulnerable folks get off the street, get into a cold place, especially overnight? Yeah, I think that um, the state has largely left these issues to local jurisdictions, and we're looking at how we can provide more support uh, in that in that regard. Um, some of the, the the homeless dollars in the budget went to those efforts, um, and they'll continue to. This is something that we see on an annual basis now um, is these heat relief efforts, um, and the state will continue to be a better partner there. Um, we're looking at the the benefits of declaring a heat emergency, if that's something that can be helpful in terms of freeing up needed resources. Um, How so, close are you to doing that? Uh, <laughs> worst, worst month ever. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just... Seems like that's a heat emergency. Yeah, right now, um, the, the resources that it would free up aren't necessarily um, needed, and so we're, we're just keeping our eye on that. Something I think about a lot, given the heat situation, water situation, mm -hmm. is... Will my children be able to make a life in this mm -hmm. place? I know you have younger children. Yeah. Do you think they'll be able to make a life in this place for 20, 30, 40 years? I do. I think that's, I, I mean, I think leadership is important when you look at these these big issues that don't have short-term solutions. Um, this the, we've It's taken a long time to get to where we are with water, with climate, um, and we have to look at longer-term solutions and... Um, and set us up strategically so that people can look at their children and grandchildren growing up here. Um, that's what, what I intend to do. When we come back, we'll look ahead. You'll want to hear what Governor Hobbs said about the Saudi farm guzzling Western Arizona groundwater, the projected budget deficit blamed on the fast-growing school voucher program, and the planned statewide vote on abortion rights. Stay with us. <laughs> 